Hi everybody, it's uh, Rob here from heatengineer.com. Uh, just a short video today discussing internal walls and internal temperatures in buildings. A uh, little bit of confusion between some people. Uh, get often, often get asked this question. If we're designing the whole of a property like this at 21 degrees inside or 22 degrees, whichever your design, inside design temperature is, the question is, is, do we need to put internal walls? So for argument's sake, the wall between the landing here and the bathroom, this wall here, this wall here between the bedroom one and the landing. The answer is very simple. No, you don't have to put the walls in, okay, for those types of rooms, and it's these two, and I'll explain in a second. But the, the temperature must be exactly the same on both sides of the wall as to what you're designing to. So for argument's sake, this wall here, between the landing and the bathroom, because bathrooms are always designed at 22 degrees, and the landing is always designed at 21 degrees after the building regulations came out in 2000. And as we all know, that the, the uh, second law of thermodynamics means that hot will always try and go to cold, so it will always go to, it will try to find equilibrium. So we would have to install that internal wall there, so as the system knows what resistance there is between that room and that room. If this room, if the bedroom one there and the landing is both at 21 degrees, you don't have to put the wall in, but what you do have to put in is the square meterage of the floor area and the square meterage of the floor area of the landing independently. Otherwise, you won't be able to size your radiator. So you literally would just take this out. So if I show you now on a um, on heat engineer itself, if you go to step four, once you're on step four, You've got all of your measurement parameters in here, and you literally come to this column here. Let me just zoom in a little bit. You come to this column here, and all we're talking about is the linear meters. So for argument's sake, if that um, uh, landing, between the landing and the bathroom, if it didn't have that wall in there, we could just change that and just put in there zero. Click OK and that's done, and save it. So we just check down here and we can see that it's taken it down now to zero. Click save. And then when we go through to our step nine now, you'll see that the whole heat loss has actually dropped down from what it was, we had 4.4 originally. So it's dropped down to that level. So you zoom back out again, and again, if that wall go, you, you decide that that's going to be going to be different, and you're going to change it and put it back in, back into step four, onto the landing, into the internal wall section there, and then put in ten. Oops, sorry, put in ten to what it was, and that's it. Always make sure you save it each time you do that. Now, just to let you know. With this, this is um, obviously quite important for, for, for people to understand the, these, these differences between these room temperatures. If you don't get those there, that's the thing. So I'll give you another example here. If I look at this particular floor plan here, if I zoom in, there's a room there. I mean, this whole of this, the whole of this ground floor, quite a large house, but the whole of this ground floor could easily be 21 degrees apart from the little downstairs loo there. The downstairs loo is going to be 20, 22 degrees. There is a utility room here, and we, I mean, that might have been a bathroom in there, but let's just take this one for this for this section. That could be a, 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 a little WC there. So all you would have to do in this particular property is just put in the walls from that point there, literally from that corner there, to there, and then all the way to there. So all of that wall and all of that little bit there. Not that bit, obviously. So it's just that is there, which you'd add on and put onto there. So the floor area would go in, and then the linear length of that internal wall there. All the rest of these internal walls, they don't have to be added in. Let's just zoom in. Obviously, you can, if, you, if, you, if you look at a floor plan and you can see, you can see this one here. This is a party wall between, between this property and the neighbouring property this side. These are all external walls. All the way around the outside here yeah and these are all internal walls but if you don't want all you need to do is just put do the square meterage of argument's sake of that hallway and then the whole square meterage now this brings us on to our second subject which is staircases 
All you need to do with staircases and landings, etc., is just pretend that the staircase isn't there. So you just measure the whole floor area as if it wasn't there, as if it was as if that was all filled in, and you still measure the ceiling height exactly the same as this. The only time that you would you would change it is if you've got an open stairwell of three floors or above. This particular property has, and then you might want to be thinking about getting in contact with our associates um, at Arius.com. Um, Go onto our associates page and look at you might need might need, well you probably will need to be looking at what is called destratification to get all of the heat that's being risen, raised up up the stairwell. And you need to get the blow that back down to the top and push that around the building to, to, to the savings are, are quite vast but yeah with stairwells you just literally forget that they are there you just measure the floor areas so for this one you just measure that floor area across there in a square and that floor area there in a rectangle and then you add them two together there could be there could be a, an internal wall down there for argument's sake but if they're both at 21 degrees you don't need it so i hope that um helps to this this little short video and uh, give us some feedback many thanks bye bye